Hi, it's just me again, getting ready to do some, chap some of Chapter 7's chemical reactions. Uh, so the goggles and the gloves, and uh, my friend Beaker uh, doesn't really have to wear goggles, but I keep him around to remind me to, to do this safely. Uh, a chemical reaction, now we're really getting in, into the heart of chemistry, uh, is uh, basically how do we know matter has been transformed? That's a chemical reaction, the transformation of, of uh, matter. So several things. We see a gas evolved, like in the soda pop, or we might even see a precipitate form. So I really do want to show you what would happen. Uh, here's a substance. I'll put this over. Here's a yellow substance, and it's actually, it is actually potassium dichromate. And so basically... It's potassium chromate, I'm sorry, K2CrO4, and it's a solution of it. Uh, let me write down on the board, because, if, because one of the things about writing a chemical equation, they're supposed to describe what's actually going on. So I have K2CrO4, and I'm going to put AQ which means aqueous. I have a solution of potassium chromate. Uh, and I have also a solution of lead nitrate. Uh, lead 2 nitrate. So PB, Roman number 2, nitrate would be O3. Nitrate, lead is plus 2. Nitrate is minus 1. So that, and it is also aqueous. Okay. So as I look at these, I'm going to react them. I'll have to go down and around the corner uh, to react them. As I re I'm going to add that to the lead nitrate to the pot potassium chromate, and what we'll see happening is, hopefully, and we do see that there it is, that the solution became cloudy, and we have a kind of a yellow precipitate form. It's no longer clear. And that precipitate is an insoluble substance called lead chromate. So the first product is PbCrO4. This is minus 2 and plus 2, so therefore that's the correct formula. And it's a solid. Plus we have still the potassium ions and the nit nitrate ions in solution. So this chemical reaction that you just saw in which you had a solution of lead chromate with a solution of potassium chromate with lead nitrate reacted to form a precipitate of lead chromate. And we still have this. Now this is the, the equation for this. It's not balanced because I had two potassiums and I have to put a two in front of that take care of two potassiums, and that makes two nitrates, which I have up there. Now, that's the balance equation for what you saw. So that's kind of the objective of this, uh, of this chapter, is to be able to write down uh, what has happened when you observe a chemical reaction. Uh, one in other interesting uh, reaction I'd like to show you. We'll put that aside. I have here some lime water. And hopefully you can see that it is clear. Okay. This is a formula for lime water. It's actually calcium hydroxide. Calcium is plus 2. Hydroxide is minus 1. So I have to take two of those. I have a solution of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add carbon dioxide to that. And the way in which I'm going to add carbon dioxide is I'm just going to, I could put dry ice, but I'm going to just, just going to, I have a sipping straw here, and I'm just going to blow into it. What's in my breath? Well, you see what's happening? It's no longer clear. It's cloudy. Can you get that? It's uh, cloudy. 
And so it's formed an insoluble substance. So what was in my breath was carbon dioxide, because that's what breathing is. You take in oxygen and you expel carbon dioxide. Not 100%, but some of it, okay? And the reaction that occurred, this is a gas, so I had to put the subscript gas to describe carbon dioxide that was in my breath. And now I have formed a substance called calcium carbonate. Calcium is plus 2, carbonate is minus 2, and it's a solid. That's what the cloudiness hasn't settled out yet, but it's a, a solid. And I had to make also some water. And you can count the things to see if this is balanced. One carbon and one carbon, three, three, four oxygens. One, two, three, four oxygens, two hydrogens, and two hydrogens. And this is, again, this is the liquid state. So we've already met those little subscripts. AQ means a solution. S means solid. Liquid means it's a liquid. And note that liquid is not is different from a solution. This is pure liquid, not something dissolved in water. And then G is for gas. So I've described what happened here in doing that. It's also kind of interesting. Uh, I'm doing a couple things with the carbon dioxide. One of the things that, that I know is that carbon dioxide dissolves in water to form an acid. In fact, all nonmetal oxides do that. Let me. Carbon dioxide, a gas, acts with water, a liquid, to form H2CO3. And that's a solution of it. And this is carbonic acid. Remembering that this was carbonate and it's a ternary acid, uh, oxy acid, so carbonic acid. So, so one of the things that we know is that uh, uh, certain indicators, they're called, change colors depending on whether it's acid. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, get this information here what it says on the bottle. It says that bromothymol blue, this is the indicator, is a, is a blue when it's base, but it's yellow when it's acid. So you can see that this solution is kind of basic. And so I'm going to add the carbon dioxide, blow it in there, and see if I can get it to change color uh, for me, because I'm making the solution acid by getting carbon dioxide in it. Green, yellow. Solution is now acid. It's changed from blue, basic, through green, which is neutral, to yellow. So the, that indicator. And that's even more fun to do, I think, with the, what we call a universal indicator. This has universal, universal indicator. It's green when it, it's blue when it's basic. It's uh, green when it's neutral, and it's uh, uh, yellow red. And so. This one, you should see all different shades. There's pretty neutral. Oh, changing fast. All the way down to the yellow. Uh, that would be... Uh, that, that I'm not going to get it any more acid than that because it's a weak acid, carbonic acid. This is a piece of magnesium. It's a metal, a little me metal strip. And, uh, and basically, uh, it's uh, just solid magnesium. Now, in air is oxygen and nitrogen. And it turns out when something burns, it reacts with the oxygen in the air. So I'm going to just heat it up a little bit catch it on fire and there we have it. Don't look at it too directly. You might recognize it as the uh, uh, the light that's in the torch. So what happened there? You have a little bit of ash and what have happened there is that we took magnesium solid 
plus oxygen. It's a diatomic element, a gas in the air. And we formed a compound, magnesium oxide, plus 2, minus 2, and it's a solid. And so the white ash you see is a magnesium oxide. This kind of reaction is a, this kind of reaction is a combination reaction because you have two things here and only one thing there. Uh, you know, there's other kinds of reactions that are decomposition where you have only one thing as a reactant and two things as a product. So that's an example of a combination and an oxidation. Um, another example, interesting example that I have is I have uh, here I have bottles of the common acids. And remember, a part of our job was to try to learn them. I have sulfuric acid concentrated. I have hydrochloric acid. This is a, has an oxygen because it doesn't begin with the word hydro. Hydrochloric is HCl. And I have nitric acid, three common acids. What I'm, and I also here have some sugar. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to pour some concentrated sulfuric acid on the top of this sugar here. Now, sulfuric acid is terribly thirsty for water. And sugar is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So what you're going to see happening is the sulfuric acid just taking the water right out of sugar. And if you take the, uh, the water out of sugar, which has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, what you're going to see is that the, uh, you're going to have only the carbon left. So what you see is, of course, you see carbon, but because the other products are, are, is heat, some water, some steam coming out of it, you see that it uh, kind of expands like a foam. And uh, uh. So that's a chemical reaction. It's simply the property of sulfuric acid to take the water out of sugar, leaving only the black carbon behind. Still growing a little bit, okay? Here's another simple example, and this reaction is often used uh, just, you know, just to maybe like in a scene, turn, turn water into wine or to make something look like it's bleeding. It looks perfectly clear. That's a solution of potassium thiocyanate. It's not one of your compounds you have to know. Potassium is K, thiocyanide is SCN, and it's a solution, aqueous solution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to react it with, oh, I'll just say, look at this. Now, look how I can see how beautifully clear that is. Let me just squirt this in here. Wine. Don't drink it, though, because actually it's that blood red color is actually a compound of, uh, of this complex, F E S C. N plus 2 uh, red. And this is a complex ion. And, uh, and then sometimes if you think you'd rather not have uh, wine, it'd be healthier for you to have a little tomato juice, well then just do this. There we are. Turn it into tomato juice. So while things are like magic, it could be. Another common reaction is a polymerization reaction. Uh, this is actually uh, an a oil mixture, and I add part B to it. Let me get my stirring rod a new one. Okay. So I just have some compound in here, and I'll just dump this other part in there. And we'll stir it up really well and see if we can get this polymerized. Oh, yeah. It's pretty hot. Whoa. Goodbye. So this is polyurethane. And the reason it foams up like that is because it releases a gas. Uh, 
We used to like to play around this and do it in our gloves and then have a hand when we got done. But, okay. Okay, in this next demonstration, we're going to observe a chemical reaction and how chemicals, it's a chemical property. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some zinc metal, and you'll find zinc metals in the bottom of this uh, glass, and we're going to add to it some sulfuric acid. I have sulfuric acid here. And the reaction will be that the zinc will replace the hydrogen and you'll get bubbles of hydrogen gas. The bubbles of hydrogen gas will come out here and, and they will go in the water and they'll displace the water that's in this test tube with a gas, hydrogen gas. At first, it'll be a mixture of uh, uh, hydrogen gas and air because the top of this container is already filled with uh, air. But as time goes on, we'll be getting pure hydrogen. When we get pure hydrogen, then we're going to move over and displace the water that's in this uh, zinc container, my little rocket container. When that begins is filled, then we will take the container and move it over to this place, and, uh, and we will have a container of pure hydrogen. There's a pinhole at the top of this. I'll just remove that, and then I'm going to ask Tessa to light the hydrogen gas. And then we should see a nice little flame of hydrogen. And we'll just listen and wait to see what happens. Um, hydrogen burns very nicely. It's thought to be maybe the best fuel in the world because it burns, produces energy and water, which doesn't pollute the environment like some other kinds of fuels, gasoline for one. So let's begin our experiment, see how it goes. This has a safety valve in it so that no pressure would build up. So as I turn this in here, you can see hydrogen beginning to form. Bubbles are forming. Would you like to match this? And I'll move over here. Yes, we have hydrogen. So we'll continue then to fill, collect the hydrogen. It's evolving quite nicely. So all I have to do is fill this container now. I'll know the container is filled because the bubbles will never go, will come around the outside of the container. There you see the bubbles coming around the outside. Okay. So now I'll move this over here. We have our hydrogen. Oh. Wrong stopper. Okay, go ahead and light it. Okay, it's lit. Hopefully you can come in on that. Okay, sometimes when you observe a demonstration like that, it's good to think back over of what you observed. And you may have noticed a very nice, quiet little flame at the top. And uh, what was happening here is the hydrogen was coming out a pinhole, and the oxygen from the air was diffusing in with the hydrogen, and, cre and it was just burning nice and quietly, hydrogen and oxygen. But what you may not have noticed is that at the bottom, I had removed the cork that was there, and so as the hydrogen came out, uh, air was coming into the bottom. And what happens is there inside we're getting a mixture of air, which contains oxygen and hydrogen. And we want to get the right amount, that the percentage that it needs to be, we'll have reached the maximum amount. Up here it's controlled. It's fed by a little bit of oxygen. But now it's mixing in there. And the minute we get the right amount, the flame actually gets drawn into the container, and then all of a sudden you have a, like a chain reaction, and you get a sudden burst of uh, the noise and the energy of the reaction. Uh, we generally think that this happens whenever 
there's two parts of hydrogen to one part of oxygen. We've reached the stoichiometric or the correct amounts to have the maximum reaction and it goes to a chain reaction, hence you see the sudden explosion. So a little bit of chemical reaction we observed today. Thank you.